Watch you guys got another video on how to make your old computer faster. Now, if you've got a really old computer and you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11 on it, if it's unsupported, just like this one here, then this video is for you. Now, there's quite a few things you can do to try and boost performance of an old computer. But again, you have to be realistic. If the computer is pretty old, there's only going to be so much you can do uh, to that computer to make it a little bit more. Uh, faster. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So we're going to be talking about some hardware changes that you can make and also some PC settings that you can change to try and make performance a little bit more uh, easier on that PC. So let's get the most obvious ones out the way first. Using an SSD can give your old PC a new lease of life. If you're using a mechanical drive, these are old and slow and clunky. And basically replacing it with something like an SSD like this one will give your old PC a little bit more of a, a performance boost. Also, trying to add as much RAM as possible to that motherboard as the motherboard can take. So, for instance, if you're on an older system and you've got 4 gigs of RAM and it can take 8 gigs, then put 8 gigs in there. It will make things a lot more easier, especially when using the latest operating systems like Windows 10 and Windows 11. Finally, if you've got an old CPU in there and it's not an i5 or an i7, then consider upgrading your CPU. If you're on a super tight budget and you can't buy a brand new PC, you might be able to find a CPU on eBay pretty cheap for, uh, for that PC. So an i7 or an i5 of that generation will give that PC a new lease of life, especially if you've been using an old uh, Celeron or something like that in there. So basically, they are the upgrades for hardware that you can do. If you've got the money, then think about replacing the whole computer because you don't want to be chucking a lot of money at that old machine. It's just not worth it. And you're going to end up wasting a load of hard earned cash on an old piece of hardware when you can build a new PC. So let's first start off with this PC I've got here. This is a modern computer. And there's a lot of processes running on this system. And this is pretty typical of a Windows 10 and a Windows 11 based system. You can see there is 287 processes. That's because there's a lot of applications and a lot of stuff that requires services and processes to be running on that computer. Now there's some options you've got here to try and make this a lot better by reducing these processes. And I'm gonna show you uh, what you can do. The problem is with modern day computers is there is a lot of processes that are running through RGB software, antivirus software, all your Photoshop and all your other software like VMware Workstation, VirtualBox, and your, you know, all your drivers, like for instance, all of your drivers for your software. These all have services and also processes that are running. For instance, Logitech loves to blow out your system, NVIDIA does, and a bunch of other uh, software like Corsair as well. You can see lists of them there. So we're going to tackle a lot of this and try to show you how to uh, get the best out of your PC, especially if it's an older PC. Having processes like that running will really grind that PC to a halt. Modern day PCs, it can handle it a lot better. But let's go into the settings pane here. And the first place you want to go to is your apps and go to startup. This is a common place where people seem to forget to look. And you can see here there's a ton of stuff enabled and you want to toggle these off. You should see here uh, what sort of impact this is going to have on the system. And uh, if you don't need it running, then just turn them off because these are going to literally impact the system quite a bit. So go through here, Cortana, all that sort of stuff, turn all these off, and you'll probably find that your PC will function perfectly fine with a lot of these turned off. Uh, your RGB should be perfectly fine and working even if you toggle these off. It just means it's going to be starting these up and putting them in the system tray and uh, things like that. So you can turn all this stuff off. We don't need all this stuff running on this PC. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle these all off. OK, so let's move on to the next step, which is uninstalling unwanted software or software you're not using anymore on your computer. We're all guilty of it where we install loads of software and we just leave it there. And unfortunately, these sometimes can have processes and uh, services running. And this can slow your PC up when you have a lot of stuff running on that PC. There's lots of stuff in here that I don't use or need anymore. And again, same thing with a lot of your drivers when you go to your driver's download page 
and download all of the drivers from the manufacturer's website. They always bloat it out with a load of stuff you don't want on the system. So be careful what you install in there because sometimes it can install a load of other stuff that you're not using. If you have more than one browser, maybe get rid of all that stuff. And there's a bunch of other bits and pieces like Armory Crate, which really does take up a lot of resources and processes and just go through and remove a lot of this stuff, uh, which comes bloated with a lot of driver stuff, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove as much of this as possible, and we'll take a look at the processes after. OK, so let's move on to the next uh, one that we're going to take care of here, which is a visual effects. Now, this doesn't really affect a modern day computer, but if you've got a really old sort of potato PC, then you really need to uh, turn these features off because these will eat up resources and you can just turn this off here and your PC will function perfectly fine. So you can see transparency effects, animation effects and things like that. When you turn it off, it just basically makes the uh, color flat. It just doesn't give it any sort of nice, fancy, uh, you know, transparency to it. So just turn all that off. And this works well for old PCs that haven't got much processing power. Turning off all of this stuff really does help uh, the transparency effects. You'd be surprised on an old system how this can help quite a bit. So you talked about an operating system that wasn't really designed for older PCs like that. And you can see now the taskbar has just basically got a flat color on it and the menu system has got a flat color. And you can see how quick that is opening up. It's opening up very fast. And that's because we've turned off all of the effects and transparency for that PC. Now, it's not going to make the old PC, you know, 10 times faster. It's just going to make things a little bit more easier for that PC to uh, deal with things like this, so especially if it's an older computer. Modern day computers, not so much of a, an issue, but older PCs, it's definitely uh, worth doing. So if you look at the uh, visual effects here now, you'll see that there's been quite a few difference uh, on here because it's now gone to custom because we've turned off the transparency. But you can still go into adjust for best performance if you wanted to, and this will remove all of the check marks. Um, but if you want to put in there smooth uh, edges on uh, screen fonts, you can do, which I would advise because otherwise it will look really harsh. And you can even add in uh, some other ones like, for instance, the folder thumbnails. If you want to in there, you can check mark those so that looks a little bit more nicer. It just depends on your preference, really. But if you're trying to save system resources, then turning this all off, especially if you've got a really old sort of potato PC, which is super old then this will help a little bit because it will turn off all the effects and things like that. Once you're happy, click apply and OK. And you should now see a pretty basic looking uh, color on here. No transparency and no effects at all. So all of the shading and things like that have been disabled on this particular PC now. And you can see it does open a lot more uh, snappier. Now, another thing you can do if you've got an older system is run some sort of script to debloat the operating system. Now, this is a uh, a choice that some people choose to make, especially on older systems, because it does remove a hell of a lot of bloatware on the computers. Quite a few, uh, you know, scripts out there you can use. This one is a pretty decent one as well. I wanted to show you this one, but basically you can download the uh, wrapper here, and you can then install this on the system and remove all of the bloat from the computer. And this will reduce the processes on that PC quite a bit. So if you just drag this out onto your PC and then import the script itself to the wrapper, you should then be able to make changes to uh, the PC. Always read the website, always uh, create a system restore point so you can revert back to that if you don't like it. And what it's going to do is uh, give you the option to check mark. The wrappers are a lot easier to use for people that are not familiar with what a script is actually doing. So you can import the uh, script here. You can see up on the top left, it says import and export. So what you need to do is go up to where it says import and then import presets. And you can see it here, uh, Sophia, just uh, import this one. And you should see um, create restore point is already done here. And you've got warning and checks and other things like that. And you can go through here and basically turn off privacy and telemetry. There's a bunch of stuff on here that should be preset and done. And you can go through 
and make some changes to your computer. There's going to be a lot of stuff on here that you don't need, like error reporting, feedback frequency, diagnostic data levels, and other things like Windows tips and things like that. If you don't want all that sort of stuff, then turn it all off and disable it. And there's a bunch of other bits and pieces on here. Just go through here, enable and disable all of the stuff that you don't want on your system. So if you want Bing search, make sure you enable it. If you don't, leave it disabled. And going through uh, here, you can check out the next one. And there's a bunch of other stuff here that you can have settings for and changing these settings on here. So you can see file extensions show and other things on here that you can uh, quickly check mark and change. Pretty much the settings should be okay to use. Uh, but again, these are all uh, your own preference. You can change them to whatever you want. Cursors on dark, you can change this to light or none. And again, moving on down uh, to the next one, which is going to be OneDrive. If you want OneDrive on here, if you don't, uninstall it. System, a same thing again. You can enable and disable a bunch of stuff on here and you get the general idea. Just work your way through all of this and check mark and enable and disable stuff you don't need. And once you're happy with your settings, you can then come down here. Just going to install some stuff here. And once you've got this all set, you're pretty much good to go. Just make sure the update policies are set exactly how you like them. You don't want to really block any of that sort of stuff. Uh, just leave that running. And once you've got this done, you can run this on your computer and it will basically remove a lot of the bloat from your PC. So let's go ahead and uh, run this script and remove the rest of this bloat here. So once you're happy, just hit run PowerShell and this will open up a little PowerShell window here. And you're going to need to say run once, put R in here and push enter and it will run and make those changes of all the settings that you've chose on your uh, script. So basically run these and say yes. And there we go. And that's now done. And it needs to restart the PC. So let's go ahead and restart the PC. So I've gone ahead and restarted the PC here. And we can now take a look at Task Manager and have a look at those processes to see how we're going here. And we're already down to 115 from 286. So you can see there's quite a bit taken back by just clearing up the PC and also running a bunch of settings and also taking out a bunch of uh, stuff we don't want running in the background. And this is giving you some system resources back on your PC. Now, yours will probably be lower than this, but you can see there's a lot less processes running on this system because I've cleaned it all out. And that's exactly what you got to do if you want a system running smoothly. Now, of course, there's still quite a bit I can do on here. And uh, you can go into the storage sense here and remove a bunch of junk and rubbish from the PC, especially uh, a lot of temporary files and things like that. You'll see that uh, on this system, once we go into the cleanup recommendations, it will give you some uh, recommendations of how much junk is on the PC. Now, this is really not going to speed up the PC at all as much. But what it's going to do is remove a lot of junk from the PC and, uh, you know, claw back some uh, valuable storage, especially if you've got a really sort of small uh, SSD on that system. And you can see here in the download section, 73 gigabytes of rubbish in there. Also, previous Windows installs, 14.7 gigabytes. And uh, there's some other stuff in here. And you can run this, check mark them and clean them up and recover some of that precious space that you've been looking for. So we always leave the downloads folder full of rubbish. And again, you can see there's quite a lot on this one. So clean it up and uh, move on to the next step. Now we can move on to the last part, which is basically going into your privacy and security and changing a bunch of stuff in here, background apps, disable all that stuff. You don't need all that stuff running. Just make sure you've got all of these settings turned off you don't need all of this stuff running the script should take care of a lot of this stuff but you might still get the odd few things in here like your location and also your notifications and other things like that check notifications here as well and that stops you from getting notified we can just turn these off and it just goes to show you how easy it is to you know claw back system resources on a pc once you spend a bit of time 
uh, going into the settings and turning a bunch of stuff off and uninstalling a load of stuff that you don't need anymore. And the reason for that is because we get lazy and we don't do no uh, maintenance on the PC. And again, the processors will start to climb and it will slow the PC up. You can see we're at 115, 117 here. This will go up and down and the utilization is pretty low. And this is a system that's been running for quite a while and it has bunches of uh, programs in here. But you can see I've cleaned a lot of this stuff out and I can probably mess around with this a little bit more and get rid of some other stuff like Armor Crate and things like that and claw back some more uh, processes. I've cleaned out the NVIDIA here and a bunch of other services that are running on here which uh, create processes on this PC. And you can do the same thing. Now, if this is still not enough for you and you want to go one step further and get you know, an ultra lightweight system, I'd advise you to use a Windows Lite version, i.e. LTSC version of Windows, or you can create your own Windows Lite versions and literally, uh, you know, have a super lightweight uh, version of Windows. And I've done videos on that. You can check my video lists uh, and you'll be able to see how to create your own Windows Lite version and have a super lightweight version and choose which to uninstall on your build and get that installed on that old machine and it should run pretty fast. You won't have to go through a lot of these steps because we're removing a lot of this stuff from the computer. So if you follow along with that tutorial, you should have a super lightweight operating system, get that installed on that old potato machine and it should run really smooth. Other options are installing Linux as an operating system and moving away from Windows on that old computer and that should give you uh, another lease of life because uh, Windows is a much more lighter weight system to run than Windows. And again, it is an option, but not everyone wants to use Linux. So the choice is yours at the end of the day. Other than that, you're going to have to either use these methods or upgrade your PC and build a new brand new PC or go and buy one that's pre-built. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video on the Discord server. Bye for now.